So in this video, we've got Miranda here still, and what she's going to discuss with you guys is her story once she found medical medium. So she kind of starts the video explaining some of the trendy diets that she started on before she found medical medium, and then she goes into, okay, I found medical medium, and here is my healing timeline. So here's the course of events that occurred from finding medical medium to today. And this is a big deal because this is a question we get all the time is, okay, I, you know, I've been doing medical medium for a year or two years now, and, mm -hmm. you know, I'm not healing or I hit a, a wall and I can't heal anymore, or it's, this is not happening quick enough. So yeah, so uh, this is really helpful to just hear different timelines, right? Yeah. Everybody's healing journey is going to be a little bit different. So, um, this is Miranda's. Here's part two. And I, so, like I said, I was keto and I would, I knew that keto was not the answer for me because I was just getting more and more and more sick very quickly, like very quickly. And so I said, what's the opposite of keto? I'm like, oh, that's like vegan, right? That's like low fat vegan. So I had already made the mindset, if this isn't working, I'm going to pull a 180, like, you know, a Costanza. Mm -hmm. and I'm going to just switch it around. So if this, is, if this is really not working, then the opposite must be something that m would help. So I started eating low fat, and low, lower fat. And I started juicing like, you know, parsley's and cilantro's and all this stuff. Now I switched overnight, like within like a one week period went, went like cold Turkey. I do not suggest that. <laughs> like, yeah, there that, was a that's very, yeah, there was a very rough transition period. So I was like, Oh, this doesn't feel great, <laughs> but I didn't blame the information. Like I knew I was making such a uh, a huge shift, right? I'm just, I knew it in my head and our, I had already decided to go vegan, lower fat anyway, because I knew what was not working. Um, so, but I, you know, this is where I think that you guys have mentioned too, but for the first year, you know, I still had red wine every night, you know, I was still eating legumes and grains. Um, the thyroid healing book, which is right here on my side, it, like the recipes are very much easier. They're easier to start with if you're starting out, right? If right. you're going from a standard American diet, thyroid healing has some beautiful recipes that are heavier, higher in fat. They have salt, they have legumes, there's grains, you know, not like, you know, gluten grains, but you know, there's some oats and different things in there. So those, that's what I started with was oh. that subset of recipes. And just by doing those changes and getting a lot of greens in, you know, I, I, my SIBO was like almost gone. Hashimoto's, I healed completely. So though those two big things, you know, were healed just by making, just taking out the no foods and taking out the junk, right. And, and putting in nutrients. So that was like, like a showstopper. Cause I mean, I remember I, I stopped eating fruit when I was in my twenties. And so this was, you know, this is like right when I hit 40, um, so that was like a great, I always tell people when I talk to people, where do I start? Well, if you are making that big switch over, you know, if you're eating like a pound of bacon a day, like me, like, like I was, you know, thyroid healing is great as a way to transition. There's a lot of transition foods, right? Those legumes are a great way to transition into a lower fat diet. Oh, um, yeah. So I can, so I got pretty far, you know, with just doing that. And I was still having my wine, but I just, I couldn't quite. I don't know. I couldn't quite seal the deal. Like I still was struggling a little bit with the stomach. I was still struggling with the fatigue. And I'm like, I know drinking alcohol isn't helping and I'm an adult and I can choose to cut that out. <laughs> yeah. <right? laughs> yeah, totally. Totally. Yeah. That's uh, that was a tough one for us. You know, when we, our first year on medical medium, we were definitely still drinking and, um, that's a tough one because, you know, you, you you work all day and then you come home and you want that glass of, wine, uh, glass of wine to relax you, you know? Right. And it's just like it's a social thing, too, when you're out with friends or whatnot. Yeah. So we get it. 
Yeah. And you share with your partner and it's like, and then you're, you know, you're cooking and you have that one and you're, you know, you're in the kitchen and it's just like that celebratory time of day where you're just like, this is nice and it's relaxing. And I've had that hard day and I deserve this glass of red wine or two or three. Yeah. Right. So like, you know, it's hard and parenting is hard and I deserve <laughs> it. Um, but yeah, so I stopped. So I guess that would have been uh, August of, August of, um, so again, so I started thyroid healing of, of um, January, 2018. So this was August of 2018. I had stopped because we'd also gone through a ton of mold exposure. So after the whole formaldehyde thing at work, and we went through mold after mold after mold exposure, that just that it, I know that people who've gone through mold know what, how devastating it can be, right? To the fatigue, to the brain fog, to like all the whole, you know, system can be tough. So it was a big trigger. Um, so I was still trying along. Um, and at this point I had finished IIN and I was, I wanted more. So I started a master's of science program in nutrition. And so I'm still like working, going to school at night, right? So if you've noticed the key, there's something I never changed throughout the whole thing, mm -hmm. right? I'm still like, burning the candle at both ends. I never addressed the adrenal piece, right? I was doing cleanses when the cleanse, or um, not the cleanse to heal, but I did the 28 day cleanse. So, you know, with the liver rescue book came out, I was doing nose cleanses. I was not eating enough calories because I would be so busy. I would like have a couple of smoothies and then forget to eat for a while. And I, so I did it the wrong way, right? Mm -hmm. So it was not the cleanse's fault. I was not eating enough calories. I was hungry a lot. Um, I did those a couple of times and I just, I never addressed the adrenal piece, right? Cause I'm always so busy taking care of kids and the husband and everyone else. And I never addressed me. Well, so, you know, fast forward to November, I November, gonna, 2019. I was just going to ask when, uh, how long was it before in medical medium, before you started doing these cleanses that were in his book? I had dibbled down like you know like I said like I was still getting the vegan pizza from down the street so the gluten-free vegan pizza so yeah. there was a long phase so when I, I started kind of doing the the cleanses and everything I kind of committed a whole nother level when I quit drinking alcohol so that would have you know, been uh, August 2018 I kind of really committed to um you know giving it its all right doing the cleanses going through the cabinet I couldn't I couldn't believe how many times I go through the cabinet and be like natural flavors again like how did that even be like what or like even like the jelly I'm like there's natural flavors and jam like I, I don't understand so there's this whole you know and the getting rid of the vinegar because I loved hot sauce and I loved vinegar um that was probably a hard one um so in November of 2019 I had never addressed the adrenal piece right so I have I gotten pretty far the fatigue was better I was able to travel internationally you know, it was going well. And then I started feeling like the nervous system was starting to take a hit. Like I was starting to feel cold all the time. So the flare was coming on, but I didn't, I didn't know it then. Right. So I would get kind of shaky and I get really cold. I'm like, this is kind of strange that the fatigue started to creep back in because I, for me, I never addressed the adrenal piece. When I said I was burning the candle at both ends, I was going to bed at like two 30 in the morning. So I was studying for my exams and then getting up at like six in the morning to take care of the kids and get them off to school. Cause at the time they were in school and then I would work all day. And then it was just, I wasn't eating enough. Uh, it was just, you know, I was still, you know, exercising at some point, it just, there was just so much going on. Um, so in November, 2019, I remember I got uh, acupuncture. A friend of mine was doing acupuncture. Um, and all of a sudden the adrenals felt like they, they blew out, right? Like I just, I couldn't regulate the heart rate. I couldn't regulate uh, um, the blood pressure. That had happened before on ozone when I did the ozone IVs, but it hadn't come back. So I had some play with it a couple of times, but then it really came back. And then all of a sudden I had full blown pots. So I'd be laying in bed and my blood pressure would go up and then they would crash. So I didn't even have to stand up to get it to do that. It was just, so a couple of trips to the ER, lots of trips to the ER for that one. <sighs> and I was so frustrated. I remember being so devastated because I'm like, I've been doing this information for almost two years. How could this have happened, right? So there was a lot of that piece that went into it. Cause I'm like, I've given up all these foods. I don't understand what's going on. 
why me? Why, why is this happening to me? Right. And Anthony says, sometimes something can start to steamroll years in advance before it ever gets to you. Right. Yeah. Before it to show its head. And then I never address, address the adrenals. So I landed myself with an Addison's disease disorder uh, diagnosis, right? Because they were, when I went in to get testing, so I was like, what is going on? I couldn't, like, could, like, it just, it's like someone pulled the rug out. I had never had felt fatigue this severe before. They uh, did the, all the adrenal testing and they're like, your adrenals are not responding to anything. Like they're not responding. You know, you're, it's not safe for you to ride in a car if you were to get in a car wreck. Um, you know, your adrenals wouldn't, you know, wouldn't respond enough to kind of keep you alive. And I'm like, um, what? Wow. <laughs> so it was a lot of fear now. Right. Mm -hmm. So with this, the, so overnight, almost my, I stopped sleeping. So I had never had insomnia like this seven months. I had insomnia that was extremely severe. And I feel for people who have had insomnia. Um, so here I am trying to function as a mom and there was no functioning because I had never had a depression before. And, and thank God it was only for me during that time of, of not sleeping because it was suicidal ideations. And I, it was just like, it's not me. Like all these thoughts would come in my head. I'm like, this doesn't even feel like me, you know? And just the heaviness of depression. And I would carry around a picture of my kids because I'm like, I have to stay grounded in why I'm here. And this is not me. This is the illness. These are the viruses. These are the metals. This is oh not me, right? It was horrifying, right? Because I was, it's like you have the depression, then you have the suicidal ideations, and then the anxiety comes on because you have the suicidal ideations and you're like, what the hell is happening to me, right? It was the scariest thing. So but, like when that, you were, was, that was the worst. When you were having these thoughts, was the thoughts related to the the detoxing that was occurring because one thing i noticed when i was really sick is the further i went down the road of living this medical medium sort of lifestyle the uh worse that depression got which to for us we kind of connected that to the detoxing that was occurring that you know you're detoxing these metals and you're killing off these viruses and bacteria and all that stuff gets released into the body so it's like toxic overload and for someone that's trying to heal this is important because sometimes you feel like you're getting sicker and you're getting worse when really you're just hitting a pocket and that pocket will eventually push its way out of your system. And then you'll, you know, you'll get out of it and you'll feel normal. again. And that is so true, Ben, because I'm like, so this book, so when Cleanse the Heal came out, I have all my books here. This thing was my lifesaver, right? So I was in bed, uh, you know, and I, and I, they were like, you have to take, um, um, like stimulants, you have to take, um, you know, different medications for your thyroid. And I'm like, I don't know for your thyroid, for your adrenals. I couldn't do it. Like, cause I'm so sensitive anyways, to supplements, to medication. I couldn't do any of the medication. So when this book came out and I read in there that sometimes you can start to pick up or you can start to feel or have sensations of people that the virus was in before you was such a relief to me because that relieved me of the guilt of everything that was going on. And I was like, oh, because that's how it felt. It didn't feel like me at all. It didn't feel like something I would have ever have thought about, right? Yeah. So that to me, when I read that part in Cleanse the Heal, it was like, it was just was like this huge, like, like I said, like this huge guilt relief. And I just, trust me, I did a lot of work with the angel of forgiveness, right? I'm like, <laughs> I need help. Um, so the, yeah, the depression kicked in. Uh, and so when, the, so when Cleanse the Heal came out, I just started, um, I went all like, this was like, I, no salt. I do not play around with any food. I am, you know, I'm not doing anything. So I did, uh, right before it came out, ironically, I was like, okay, what recipes have come directly from spirit, right? Spirit of compassion have given us heavy metal detox smoothie, liver rescue smoothie, spinach soup. I know those three, you know, and like, that was all I would eat. And then I'd have to have potatoes at night just to kind of ground my nervous system. I couldn't go raw. Yeah. It was too much for my nervous system. So I did that pretty much for a year and a half. Wow. So going into, you know, 2020 and into this year, that's how I ate like that. 
like people were like, well, how can you do that every day? Because I was really sick and I wanted to get the hell out of there. Uh -huh. Right. Like, okay. Nothing tastes yeah. better than your own health. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, and that, and for me, and I know we talked about a little bit about supplements. I couldn't do supplements. Like I was so raw and sensitive and shot at this point. I couldn't detox anything. Right. My adrenals, when Anthony says you need three part adrenaline to two part detox, right. To get those guys out. I couldn't, I couldn't do it. Like I didn't, my adrenals were like, no, I had to have my husband walk me to the bathroom. I couldn't take showers. It was just, I was done. Yeah. Right. So all I could do was like to get these nutrients in and there, I will say that there are many tools in this book, as you guys know. So at my worst at sleeping, I couldn't even digest even the smoothies. I was like, my system was like, I, I, we can't do this. So I did the banana mono cleanse with potatoes at night. Right. And doing that pulled me out of insomnia. The pendulum started to swing the other way, finally, because you really, you know, relieve the stress on the digestive system. Right. So that energy can go towards somewhere else. Mm -hmm. And I was finally starting, you know, to, to go that direction. And then after a couple of weeks of bananas, of just bananas and butter leaf lettuce, I was able to add the smoothies back in. Um, so very slowly. And then, so that was like, you know, 2020, going in 2020, I got the plague while I was still in bed. So oh that wasn't fun. Yeah, it's just like one thing after another. So I had a um, July of 2020, I lost a dear pet of mine who was like my soul, my soul angel pet. So we had a traumatic death there. <clears throat> and then the next month we all, the whole family got the plague. And so it was literally like, I'm telling you, this information works because I went through it all in 2020 <laughs> between not sleeping and the plague and like, you know, loss of a, like our fur, our fur baby. So even through all that, like the tools are in this book. And I'm happy to say that just through following that and being really hardcore and strict with it, you know, it took me about a good seven months to feel that pendulum really start to go. I'm starting to sleep every other night. Now I'm starting to sleep more hours in the night. Now I'm starting, and as soon as that sleep came back in, we all know what it's like not to sleep, right? You know, the sleep came back in and then everything started falling back in place. But I tell people consistency, it's going to feel like hell. And you may not think that healing is occurring, but it sure is. And I would tell people, look, you know, the cracks on my heels were healing before the insomnia healed. And I would, it would drive me crazy. I'm like, nobody sees my feet. Like, I don't care. If I have cracks on my feet, I just want to sleep and I would get mad. Um, but, you know, the liver has to heal in its way that it has to heal. Right. Mm -hmm. So that was the order in which my body had to, to do it in order to get to the deeper layer stuff to heal the insomnia. Right. Um, and so I'm happy to report I sleep like a dream now. <laughs> uh, you know, it's been a long time. Are so it's been, you know, two years. Are you doing anything that is is helping you through this especially getting that sleep at night because that that's a big thing a lot of people are always asking us well how can you know how can i get better sleep and it's important because we need to heal and sleeping is part of that that healing that yeah, takes place right so like ben he takes once he started taking melatonin that seemed to help him a lot what what are you doing or what did you do miranda that has helped you. So, I mean, I take, I, I still am very sensitive to supplements. So I'm still like, you know, baby doses on some things. Melatonin is not one I could do quite yet, but it is on my list of things, but magnesium, I take copious amounts of lemon balm. Um, so it's funny. Cause like, because I feel so sensitive energetically, I like to do my herbal tinctures in the morning. And then I do all my caps at night before bed. So I still take, you know, the curcumin and the magnesium and the lysine. Lysine was a lifesaver for me. Once yeah. I could tolerate taking lysine, it was like, oh, it felt so good, you know? Um, and that one helped me sleep more than even like the magnesium and lemon balm because it just takes that heat off the, the nervous system, right? It's like that aspirin for the nervous system. So, I mean, I, I, if I feel a little uneasy, like I'll still have my mango with the magnesium. So I still do some things like that. I mean, to get me through the rough spots when I was really not feeling well, I would do a second celery juice right at bedtime. Like I would do like another 16 ounces of celery juice and then turn the light off just to get those mineral salts in. 
Um, so I had a very like rhythmic and not changing diet for a long time. And I'm to the point now where I'm like, you know, I kind of want to change it a little bit, you know, like, you know, I kind of want to do a different kind of smoothie maybe like, so I'm, I'm personally working through the, the, you know, the letting go phase of like, you know, I feel pretty good. It doesn't have to be the same thing every day. Like I've gotten to a point where I'm like, maybe I want a blueberry spinach smoothie instead, like <laughs> not, and not taking out the heavy metal detox, but like playing around a little bit with food a little bit, like getting more creative because there's all these delicious recipes, right? Mm -hmm. uh, you know, maybe I don't have to eat plain steamed potatoes every night anymore, you know, and it's just going, Ooh, maybe I'll try that, you know? So, <laughs> you know, this past Thanksgiving was such a, a gift to me because I was, it was the first time in two years that I could sit at the table and enjoy a meal um, you know, with my family who do eat, who do eat this way as well. The husband I'm working on them, but, um, you know, to have that gift of being able to, to, to enjoy a, a holiday meal, was just like, it was the biggest Thanksgiving in my life. You know, I was just so grateful for that, to have my health to do that. So I, I imagine Miranda, your whole family saw all of this going on yeah with you. i mean how how were they doing during all of this i mean how are they handling it oh oh yeah it was hard to admit i was in the er two to three times a week with my heart issues so that was um yeah i mean it was funny because the, the personality of your children my daughter is like this is so exciting you know and my son's like i don't like this Aww. so it's it was just and it helped me so much because to have them around, um, especially when we all got kind of locked down, it was where my, it was where the game shifted for me because I had companionship, right? Because before everyone went to work, everyone went to school and I was home alone all day. And I was like, I'm going to die when I'm home alone, right? <laughs> so when having those people in with me, you know, and having to be a mom and put the smile on, even when you're like, okay, hide the tears, ha, you know, that helped just to then I couldn't lay there all day and think about how miserable I was. And that's a couple of things I would love to share is that one thing, like a few things that helped me was not focusing on my health all day. Once you get a plan, right. When I, like I said, I, I couldn't do many supplements. So it was a lot of lemon balm tea and some zinc. That's pretty much all I could do. But once you get a plan, um, stick with it. Right. And then don't, don't keep reevaluating all the time. Yes. Reevaluate if them, something changes or something comes up, but kind of get a general idea, you don't have to, to go researching or reading about it because it was became an obsession, right? Am I feeling, what am I feeling now? What about now? What about now? You know, was, what was that? And it's just, you're going to feel things ebb and flow and they're going to come, they're going to go. And, you know, I've done a couple um, modified cleanses because I still keep my potatoes in at night and I still feel old symptoms still pop up and they, whoop, they move right out, you know? So you, you, what you were saying earlier, Ben, is that when you heal, sometimes you feel those feelings or you feel those symptoms sometimes because the die off of that virus that's causing the problem, like Anthony says, they explode. Sometimes the virus cells explode and you get all that, you get all that crap, you know, and you feel it, right? You feel it energetically, emotionally, physically, and then you, whoop, it goes out. And I'm like, good riddance. Yeah. <laughs> So it sounds like you've been doing a lot of cleansing and you've been getting the whole family involved and you've been doing this, what, about four years now? Yeah. So this is a question that a lot of people are going to ask is when did you start to feel like your old self again? Yeah. When did you get over that hump? Um, yeah, it's, it's challenging because I had that such a huge flare halfway into it and I, and I, you know, I feel for people who have a flare while they're doing this work, right? Because all kinds of crazy stuff pops in your head. But um, I mean, really, it was this, I think about a year in, so maybe like, you know, a year into really cleansing. So seven months in, I noticed a huge difference in sleep. Um, but then we got hit with the plague and the loss of the little, our fur baby. So it's so hard to say, but around the seventh month is when I was like, wow. I noticeably feel a lot different. Um, and again, that was with like hardly any supplements. That's like nothing. It took me a year and a half to be able to really push some supplements. And that just means like, you know, 
I take like what's considered like, I think Anthony says like the core, the mm -hmm. core seven or the core eight or whatever. So basically whatever Vimergy offers. And then I do some Oregon grapefruit for the heart palpitations that keeps them at bay. But, um, you know, it's just, so I say it's a good seven months to notice, but there were slight changes. So like, you know, I, insomnia is easy one to track because it's like you either sleep or you don't sleep, right? So the sleep would, I would start sleeping a little bit more and then more frequently. So like I'd have a better night of sleep every other night or, you know, one in three nights, or it just got slowly like, you know, no sleeping. And then it started to go up, up, up. And then it finally, whoop, it took off, right? So when I was able to add in the supplements, um, when I was able to add in the lysine and the magnesium uh, and the vitamin C, it just really shot, you know, shot off. So, I mean, I tried some of the harder stuff. I when I first started my flare, I pushed my body very hard. So I doubled down on a lot of supplements I was seeking already and it just backfired. Like for me personally, I know a lot of people who do well with supplements and that's how they get out of it. Mm -hmm. But I just, I couldn't do that part with it. You know, it was more of a challenge for me. Um, so for me, my story has been slow and steady wins the race, right? Yeah. You know, just um, having the faith and the patience. The patience I tell people that I talk to, the patience is the hardest supplement to take, right? It's the hardest one. No one wants the patience. So it's like, I, I'll take the, the vitamin C, I'll take the micro C, I'll take the B12, but patience, uh, where do, like, where can I get that in a capsule, right? <laughs> yeah. Oh, totally. Yeah. I mean, that's a big part of living this medical medium lifestyle is, you know, healing takes time and yeah. you can't just expect to do this for a year and all of a sudden you're like back in your old swing of things you know this takes time i mean you know that and you know we've been doing this five years now and still feel like we have a lot of healing to do right mm -hmm. yeah, so definitely. um it's important for those of you watching to know that you got to be patient like Miranda was saying, you know, take that patience pill and know that, you know, over time you're doing your body right by putting all these good foods in, in it. And yeah. eventually you'll get over that hump and you'll start to feel like you can do some of those old things again. And then once you gain that back, it's like all these, you know, steps forward and not as many steps back totally yeah all right you guys so that was part two to miranda's story next video is going to be what she eats in a day yeah and that's a that's a good one because everybody eats a little bit different but they still follow the same protocols yeah. right yep totally so see you guys next time see ya